Chair URB. Ready to begin. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the September 16, 2020 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. First item on our agenda is uh, uh, roll call. Jane? Chairman Chernick? Here. Commissioner Flagg? Here. Commissioner Goldberg? Here. Commissioner Height? Present. Commissioner Kohler? Here. Commissioner Honoran? Here. Commissioner Poland? Here. Thank you, you have a quorum. Great, thank you. Um, next is uh, communications. Before we get into that, uh, I wanna just read this. Um, anyone wishing to speak during public invited to be heard, which is items four and seven, or during any public hearing items, which is agenda item six tonight, will need to watch the live stream of the meeting for instructions about how to call in to provide public comment at the appropriate times. We've got that up on our screen right now. Instructions will be given during the meeting and displayed on the screen when it is time to call in to provide comments. Comments are limited to five minutes per person and each speaker will be asked to state their name and address for the record prior to proceeding with their comments. Please remember to mute the live stream when you are called upon to speak. Um, in terms of communications, let's turn to uh, Don Burchett, our planning manager. Chairman Schernack, we have nothing to report at this time. Okay, thank you, Don. Next on our agenda is our first public invited to be heard. Uh, we'll display our call-in information, please. I believe Heather is the master behind the screen here, running all the uh, uh, behind the green curtain, shall we say. Um, we'll have it up on the screen here soon for those viewing from home. Um, you will call 1-888-788-0099 and when prompted, enter the meeting ID 838-3828-8942. Um, it takes us about five minutes to get everybody pulled into the meeting. Uh, so again, call 1-888-788-0099. When prompted, enter 838-3828-8942. And this is for any items which are not on tonight's agenda. We'll take a five minute break to allow the process to work. Thanks.
chair, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and give just a second for the live stream to catch up here. Okay. Thank you, Heather. We have one caller in the waiting um, room, and so I just admitted them to the meeting. Um, okay. Caller number 529. I'm going to unmute you in just a moment. If you would please state your name and address for the record, and you will have five minutes to speak. And just for clarification, this is for items that are not on the agenda tonight. So anything that's not on the agenda. So not about villas at U Creek. And then one also, one other note also for the caller, if you would please make sure that your live stream is muted so that we don't get feedback in the call. Hello? I'm sorry, did it, I missed the instructions on what we were, it said to unmute my phone and so I've unmuted my phone. Okay, great. So we have, uh, if you would please state your name and address for the record, and then you'll have five minutes to speak. Uh, Stephen Williams, I live at 710 Clarendon Drive. This is for the villas at Ute Creek on the uh, agenda. I just had a question for- uh, the... Excuse me, Mr. Williams. Um, yes. I just wanna clarify that uh, this particular call-in time is for items that are not on the agenda tonight. Um, I'm sorry, if, I heard that. I didn't hear the first part of that when you said it was for the items not on the agenda. Okay, then I will, then I don't know why I'd ask me to unmute. So, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Heather, did we have anybody else? I think Mr. Williams was the only one. He was the only one at this time, yes, sir. Okay, so we will close the uh, public invited to be heard. And um, next on our agenda is approval of our minutes from August 26, 2020. Do we have any discussion amongst the commission about the minutes? Seeing none, do we have a motion to approve? Commissioner Goldberg? Yeah, thanks, Chairman. I'd like to move to approve the minutes from the August 26th meeting. Okay, Commissioner Poland. I'll second that. I will second that. Okay, so we have a motion to approve and a second. Uh, all those in favor of approval of the minutes say aye, raise your hand, aye. 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 Any abstained, or uh, Commissioner Kohler abstains, any no's? I forgot to ask for no's. Okay, so Jane, uh, that passes uh, six in favor, zero no's, and one abstention from Commissioner Kohler. The minutes are approved. I also want to comment, uh, Jane, I think those were the longest minutes we've, we've had, um, so good job. Uh, I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we will open up uh, item six on our agenda, which is Villas at Ute Creek Right-of-Way Vacation, PZR 2020-7. Associate Planner Zach Blazek, who will start the presentation. Good evening, everyone. Can you see and hear me? All right, and we got the presentation up. Fantastic. Okay, hello everybody. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Zach Blazik. I'm an associate planner here with the city. And this is my planning and zoning commission debut, so be kind. <laughs> I'm here this evening to present the Villas of U Creek vacation of right of way application, the outcome of which will be a recommendation from you all of a decision to the city council. We can go to the next slide. I'd like to start by introducing Doug Gossett, who is with us from Public Works. Chris isn't with us, but if you have any engineering questions, we have Doug with us. You can go to the next slide. So a right-of-way vacation is a major application for development. These often go straight to the city council for a decision, but the code does provide the opportunity for staff for, to refer them to planning and zoning for a recommendation. And that's what brings us here this evening. Next slide. So the Villas at Ute Creek Condominium Subdivision is located at 1703 Whitehall Drive at the northwest corner of 17th Ave and Pace Street. Uh, Whitehall Drive is a platted public street within the subdivision and residents take access from Pace up there in the northwest corner. You can go to the next slide. Within this existing right-of-way on Whitehall Drive, there are several parking spaces on three separate elevated concrete pads, which we can see in the image here. There's also existing landscaping in the right of way and access to resident mailboxes. Next slide, please. 
So the owner representation or the owner representative of the property, which is the Villas at Ute Creek HOA, has petitioned the city of Longmont to vacate a portion of the west side of the platted Whitehall Drive where that parking and landscaping is located. Specifically, the HOA would like the city to vacate 3,675 square feet of right of way where the parking and landscaping is located. An additional easement will replace the existing right of way in place, which the city will then still have permission to access, um, just in case anything is necessary there for curb improvements or something like that along the edge of the right of way. And the applicant is here to speak more to this request, but in summary, what it will do is allow the HOA to manage the existing parking and landscaping there currently located within the right of way as it currently is along the west side. It'll additionally place the burden of regular maintenance, things like snow management, striping in the parking area, asphalt management, landscaping, entirely on the homeowners association. Next slide, please. DRC staff reviewed this proposal against the criteria listed here and found the vacation request in compliance with the Longmont Municipal Code and the review criteria. However, we did opt to refer the application to this hearing for a recommendation after receiving some neighborhood input during the review process specific to the following criteria, which is 15.02.055C. The public benefits and utility of the vacation request outweigh any adverse impacts of the vacation. At the time of the application, some residents and neighbors raised concerns that public parking in the complex could become more limited as a result of the vacation, uh, you know, which may require some to park in the adjacent neighborhood or find other solutions for their parking. Next slide, please. So this is a summary of the neighborhood input process. Um, a neighborhood meeting is not required for a vacation of right of way, despite the fact that it's a major application. And again, the director may waive planning and zoning review if there are no unresolved issues, but through the neighborhood input process, we determined that a public hearing and recommendation from the commission may be beneficial uh, in the event that again, there was no neighborhood meeting um, and comments with objections were presented in the first round of notification. I'll have more on that in a moment. Um, this hearing just gives residents the opportunity to provide input and gives the commissioners the opportunity to ask the applicant any questions before making a recommendation. You can go to the next slide. So this is a summary of the notice procedure and the neighborhood input. When this application was presented in early March, I received nine phone calls and one email, which was included in your packet. They were all in opposition to the application. Um, in summary, the concerns were mostly to do with HOA regulation on the parking spaces, decreasing parking availability, or requiring people to find other solutions for their parking. When I sent the notice for this hearing, I received two comments. One was a call and one was an email. Both were just requests for information with no further comment. We can go to the next slide. The commission has three options. We can recommend city council approve the ordinance, find the vacation in compliance, recommend city council approve the ordinance with conditions, or recommend city council deny the ordinance. Next slide, please. Staff does recommend that the Planning Zoning Commission recommend approval of the vacation this evening to city council based on the application meeting the review criteria. Next slide. That's all for my presentation and the next step will be to have applicants speak and we can take any questions. All right, let's, uh, let's roll right into the applicant's presentation, please. Thank you, Zach. Thank you all. So Heather, you're going to want to give them the opportunity to unmute themselves. So this is Joe Taylor. I am the HOA uh, community manager. Zach, first of all, that was a great presentation. Uh, sounded like you've been doing that a hundred times. So great job there. And thank you very much for this whole process. Um, I personally have been involved with the bills at Ute Creek. Um, well, let me start my video here. I, I personally have been involved with the bills at Ute Creek since January of 2018. When the, um, association was built back in the early 2000s, it was always the assumption that these parking spaces on Whitehall Drive were part of the association, even to the point where over the last 20 or so years, we've actually been maintaining the trees and the grass um, 
in those areas um, on an ongoing basis. Back um, in 2015, it was brought to my attention at that time that um, for whatever reason it was brought up that, that the HOA did not um, own those parking spaces. And at that time, the attorney that is no longer practicing and was involved was working with uh, Ava with, as well as with the board members. And we had an a email from Ava who worked, I believe worked at the, the um, planning department at that time that said, no, that the association um, does own those parking spaces. That indeed was at that time um, confirmed with the association attorney. And so life went on. Um, about a year and a half ago at this time, um, I got a call from um, somebody at the city of Longmont and um, you know, asking questions about it again. And I said, no, those are the association parking spaces. And they said, well, they're not showing it recorded. I produced the email from Ava and the attorneys at that time and went back and forth and said, yes, those are the association um, um, parking spaces. Well, um, evidently it never got properly recorded at that time back in 2015 and the ball just got dropped again, um, you know, a year and a half ago, which was when um, we started looking and say, okay, what do we need to do to finalize this process? And then that's when we got involved with with Zach and had the um, applicate or the uh, appointment with the pre-application team. Uh, they let us know and, and the board know what was needed to be done as far as the surveys and all that, uh, which we did over the over the last year. Um, so I mean, we've, the, the association still is under the understanding that it does belong to them. So at this point, we're just, I guess, trying to make everything official for for lack of better. Um, terms. Uh, just some quick bullet points here. Um, if, if, the, uh, if it is approved, the road vacation will not have any impact to the city. Uh, the road vacation will have no impact on the adjoining neighborhoods as there's a continuous perimeter fence that defines the boundary of the HOA from other properties and neighborhoods. The road vacation is contained within this perimeter fence. Due to the limited parking in the HOA, um, with the with those parking spaces, it would allow 18 common area parking spaces for nine units. Um, if we don't have those, then we're gonna be, only have seven um, guest parking spaces for the 90 units. Um, the, again, the HOA has already been maintaining the area for the past 20 years, including the grounds, the parking spaces, the plants, trees, watering, et cetera. Um, the HOA will grant an easement on all road property vacated by city to the HOA and again, there will be no financial impact to any part as a result of the road vacation. So um, with, with all that said and done, you know, the, the um, Bills of U Creek Board of Directors is, is asking for approval to kind of make official what we thought was official for the last 20 years. Um, I would like to, um, if you can unmute Nancy Clayton, the board president, if she has any uh, comments to what I just added, I, I would appreciate it. I'm, I'm unmuted. unmuted. Um, I don't have any further comments except that I have lived here 16 years and was told when we bought that we could not uh, park overnight uh, because of the limited number of spaces. And we do have tandem garages, so we have room for three cars, two in the garage and one in the driveway. Um, I just think that I would appreciate if the city would give us this in filing the records straight so that we know that we do have these parking places. Mr. Taylor, is, is that a conclusion of your presentation? Yes, yes, I have nothing further to add, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Um, so um, do we have any questions from the commission that just clarify things right now? Commissioner Height. Of course I need to get something clarified. Um, I'm confused, how many units are in the HOA? 90 or 18, I misunderstood. Mr. Taylor, how many total units? The 90, nine zero units. And how and many? With the parking spaces that we're asking to be finalized there, there would be 18 parking spaces, guest parking spaces. 
Thank you. That's it. Okay. Anybody else with questions at this time? Seeing none, let's uh, let's go ahead and, and open the public uh, hearing part of this session. Um, so uh, we already have Mr. Williams on the line, but we need to make sure whether there are any other uh, uh, members of the public who would like to, uh, to call in on this. So uh, we'll put our slide up on the screen showing the phone number. Um, please call 1-888-788 0099 and when prompted enter the meeting ID 838-3828-8942. So it's 1-888-788-0099 and then enter the meeting ID 838-3828-8942. This takes about five minutes for us to make sure we've got everybody pulled in. Uh, so we'll take a five minute break. Thanks.
Chair Shernack, we have about 30 more seconds, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen if the commissioners sure. can come back on. Does not Thank look you. like we have any additional callers at this time beyond um, our guest who called in earlier. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so we'll get started again. Mr. Williams, uh, phone number ending 529. Uh, please go ahead and unmute your phone. Give us your name and address for the record, and we'll hear from you for up to five minutes. My address is 710 Clarendon Drive. I live in Spring Valley at Ute Creek, which is right uh, on the other side of the villas. And I just had a question for the petitioners of, you know, what's the history of those parking spots and the overnight parking and towing? I've noticed quite a few cars that park right at the end boundary of our neighborhoods. Um, at least one or two I know to be residents of Spring Valley, but I know, notice several others are um, potentially residents of the villas. And it, it, is there any suggestion that by vacating the row, you'll be able to tow people that live, that park there overnight and we'll start seeing increased traffic in Spring Valley as people park here to walk over to the villas? Um, so, Mr. Williams, just so you know, we don't really go through a um, uh, Q&A sort of uh, okay. period during, during your comments. Um, uh, we're making note of, of your comments um, and we'll make sure that, that, that we try to get answers to your questions. Anything else you'd like to uh, raise? Any other issues? That's the only issue for us. Um, Zach explained all the other things. I was the emailer asking questions today. so. That's it. Thank you very much for, for your time. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Williams. All right. So we will uh, close the public hearing part of this item and return to discussion amongst the commission. Um, we, uh, I'm a little confused myself um, as to exactly what's going on. And maybe, Zach, you can help uh, explain this for me. Um, can you give us uh, some history um, as Mr. Taylor and Mr. Williams uh, referred to, as to exactly what's happened with, uh, with these parking spaces, why they were or were not recorded. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm confused as to just what the heck's happening here. Can you guys see me and hear me okay? Don't it looks like my camera might be frozen. Um, my case gray. So I think this would be a good opportunity for Joe to chime in as well, um, as far as the history on that parking. Uh, my understanding is that the parking spaces were initially signed as private parking and they were signed as, as such in the public right of way. That's kind of what brought about this application in the first place. But I'll let Joe speak about that. Yeah, no, I think you're on the right track there, Zach. Um, again, since we've been maintaining the uh, over the last 20 years, we always thought it was ours. We had the two cases where it was brought up that they might not be ours. And again, with the email with Ava and our attorneys, in 2014 and 2015 and coming to the conclusion, yes, they are the association properties. The ball was dropped again until spring of last year when it came up again. And we're like, no, we've got these emails between our attorneys and Ava, the city of Longmont planning, they are ours. And then that's when they found out, well, it, it was never recorded that way. And then we're like, okay, what do we need to do that? And that's when we met with the pre-application, we went over the process and kind of where we are today you know we spent about five thousand dollars just in survey costs alone to to get this formalized for something we thought had always been in place for the last 20 years okay commissioner height uh two things joe um in your materials there's an exhibit a and zach in your materials there was a photograph um you know we could share first zach's photograph of what these spaces look like they look like sidewalk to me i just want to confirm they, they they that's exactly if you were looking at it from a eagle's view it would look like it's 
an extended sidewalk in those areas. That's exactly what it would look like from, from above. Okay, Jack, or I don't know, Heather, can you pull up Zach's presentation and find that page with the picture of what these things look like? Yes, give me just one moment. <clears throat> Joe, or I'm sorry, Mr. Taylor, are, is there an adjacent sidewalk? Um, Nancy, can you answer that? I can't, I mean, across the street, there is a sidewalk, but on that side, I believe it's just street gutter and then where we have the parking spaces, you've got the concrete, but when those parking spaces, yeah. So when those parking spaces end, I don't believe there is a sidewalk past that front car. And Nancy, maybe you can expand on that a little bit. I can't picture that in my mind right now. Ms. Clayton? Because that looks like sidewalk to me. Joe, is there any difference between this side of the street and the other side of the street? Uh, yes, the, the other side of the street is, is just oh. a sidewalk and... Okay. Go ahead. I, I'm unmuted now. And the sidewalk is on the east side. It'd be on your left on this picture. And this will be uh, the picture of five parking places that are across from... They're the nearest to our mailbox pedestals. And so this would be at the north end of Whitehall, going through our complex. And that's the west side of Whitehall at the north end. The east side of Whitehall on that side of the, the other side of the street, it is, does it look any different? It, it, well, it's a little less wide. So those parking places are wider than it, on the east side. And do you, do you also so, park in front of those pine trees? Yes, that's a designated parking also. So there's five parking places. They're starting just a little bit to the left of the pine tree. And it's pretty hard to see. There's two cars and then there's three more parking places to the north, to the back of those place, uh, cars. And so this entire 3,000 foot vacation that the HOA is seeking only can house 12 vehicles? Why is that? It's 3,000 feet well, long. It's, it's 11 parking places. So this is the most, this is five. And then as you head on south, there will be um, a driveway going into a standalone garage and there'll be three parking places. Then you come to a landscaped area of rocks and trees and shrubs, and you have three more of these places, all on the west side of Whitehall as it curves from north to south. So, and so those are the 11 that um, we thought as an HOA that they belong to us, and we have maintained them. And at one time, um, there was no signs up, but we found that some homeowners thought that they could just claim one for their own um, for long periods of time. And that's what started this back in 2014 of us being able to have a car towed if they stayed overnight or 48 hours or 72 hours. Okay. Back to exhibit A, which is um, the, the plotting of this 3,500 foot long vacation. Um, it seems to me when I looked at it, that that was uniformly wide. Are you explaining to us now that <clears throat> though the parcel that you're looking for is uniform in width, it's not all paved. Some of it is rock, some of it is landscape, is that correct? Well, I have no idea where this 3,700 square feet. 
I assume that has to come off of the survey that we paid for. Yes, that is um, correct. It, it, it is correct. There's grass areas and rocked areas and all the way going through there. That is correct. That's already an area that we were maintaining and have been for the last 20 years. Interesting. Thank you. Chairman Schernick, this is Susan. Um, I could pull up Google Maps, which may give you a better overview to look at if you'd like. Yeah, please. Thank you. And uh, let's go to Commissioner Kohler. I was going to suggest the, the same thing. If you actually go to the Street View, they have a pretty good video or set of, of uh, pictures that you can see the parking there. But one of my questions was, so what, what's the difference, you know, practically speaking, if the HOA owns these parking spots or if the city does? Is the HOA towing and currently, but the city isn't allowing that? Is that the scenario? The, the HOA, we, we tow as a last resort. What we do is we, we, we tag it and say, hey, um, there's no parking here from midnight to 6 a.m. From 6.01 a.m. to 11.59 p.m., anybody can park there. We don't care. But at midnight, it's got to be cleared out. Otherwise, there's vehicles that were just staying there for, you know, 48, 72 hours back in the day um, and even a week or two on, on, on end. And, and the city never took action. And the understanding was, well, if, you know, the city's not going to tow anybody if it's the association's property there. Um, and then that, and Nancy, you can correct me on this, back in 2014, that's when we started putting up the signs to say, hey, no parking from midnight to 6 a.m. because the city just wasn't taking any action on towing cars. Nancy, is that a fair statement? Yes. So when we got the, um, when we spoke with Ava and got the word from the lawyer and Ava that these parking places belong to us, then is when we installed the sign saying no parking from midnight to 6 a.m. And that you would be towed at your own expense. But we have an application process that uh, if a person does need to park there, uh, they can apply and they can park up to seven days, according to our policy that we adopted after we got the word from our lawyer and Ava in 2014-15. So the idea is that these spaces are supposed to be for the visitors of the villas, not the homeowners who have a, a third vehicle or something parking there all the time. Is that I, right? Correct. Ideally correct. Yes. Okay. Which Makes is why sense. with a limited number of, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, go ahead. That's why with the limited number of spaces, it's it's essential because if we don't have these, we've got seven spaces for 90 units for guests. Okay. And, and then- We have a little the, bit of an elderly community there too. So we've got a lot of caregivers and that kind of stuff that, that need to come and have access. And there's no plans to change the, because right now it looks like there's no parking allowed on that street, on that west side, unless you're in one of those spaces. There's no plans to change that, right? No, because the street is too narrow there. Uh, that that street is, uh, I don't have the exact measurements, but Whitehall Drive going through Villas at Ute Creek is less number of feet wide than when you go out, when you make the right-hand turn and go uh, west on Whitehall Drive, that becomes a wider street. So if anyone parks on not in one of those parking places, then you have basically a one-way traffic area through Whitehall Drive. Okay, that answers my questions. Thank you. I saw some other hands up from other commissioners. Commissioner Flagg. Thank you, Chair. Um, There. Your sound is, is now muted, Janelle. Apparently, somebody said they couldn't hear me. Um, this is for the traffic engineer. I'm curious as to 
if these, if Whitehall is actually um, a public or a private road, and uh, for the entire complex, White Whitehall Drive is um, is a public road. The loop coming around. I don't want to say a horseshoe, but almost like a the horse, the racetrack there. That's all private. But the section from from what part to what part is public? From Pace Street to uh, where where Whitehall Drive and Clarendon Drive meet. That part of Whitehall Drive going west. It, yeah, right where that arrow is right now is is public. So um, then my question is, what is the width of that street? Presently, the public part of it? I, it well, might have been the survey. I know it was measured. I wouldn't say it was 16 feet, but I don't, I, I don't know. I know it was part of the application process that the survey did, uh, the surveyor did look at. Okay. In, in what we took as our own measurements was that the street uh, is 21 feet 6 inches wide. And when it makes the turn to the west, it's 34 feet 6 inches wide. So a difference of 7 feet. Um, I understand Doug Gossett there. Are you part of the traffic engineering people? I am not a part of the traffic engineers, but I am one of the public works um, engineers. So I believe, and this is an estimate, I believe it's approximately from flow line to flow line. It's about 21 to 22 feet, um, which is generally the minimum section that you would have for traffic in both directions. Um, I could pull up the subdivision plat and give you the total right of way width, which would include the sidewalk. And I'll have that in one second. So it's approximately 34 feet in total right away width. So that'd be measured from generally back of walk um, to this parking. So the parking takes off about a third of the entire right of way area, the paved right of way area. That'd be correct. In some areas it's paved, in some areas it's grass, but um, this is not a typical street. Typically, what you would see is you'd have widened asphalt, and that's where your parking's at, is in the asphalt. Um, it's one of the commissioners admission, mentioned this is designed more almost like a sidewalk. So it's basically mimics what um, sidewalk would look like, but it is parking. Okay, thank you. Um, Susan, could you pull back up the, uh, the Google Maps shot? Um, I have a question for Mr. Taylor about this and if you could zoom back in just a little bit. Thank you. Um, and if you wouldn't mind just scooting the image over to the right a little bit so we can see the Clarendon Drive a little better. Yeah, perfect, thank you. Um, so Mr. Taylor, where, so we know that, um, that on your survey that the easement is shown um, down toward the, uh, the southern tail of this. But then it starts, uh, the sidewalk curves and you see a silver car park there, right by the word Whitehall Drive. Yep, that one. Um, where does your ownership of Whitehall Drive begin and end as the HOA? So if I remember correctly, when I was out there with the survey and Nancy, you might want to um, chime in too. I believe it's right where the trees uh, go to yeah, right there, um, right about there. That area right there is where um, the uh, the it, it ends. Nancy, is that correct? Yes. Can you see the privacy fence? Um, well, you can't hardly see it, but if you see the white car on Whitehall Drive, uh, that one, and then just go a little bit to the west of that, uh, behind that bush, is our fence, and then it comes to the uh, south, and it ends just in those trees down here to the south. And so uh, all of that is our HOA. And then okay. it, um, so Claire, um, about where the difference in the pavement, the color, 
the darker is would be Billings and the lighter would be Spring Valley. Okay. So it seems that like from Mr. Williams's comments that and, and questions, um, that it's this um, juncture between uh, the Villas HOA and the Spring Valley HOA and who controls uh, parking spaces and how they're getting enforced. And, um, uh, and this all goes to the question of, is there an adverse impact on to the, uh, the surrounding neighborhood? Uh, that's where I'm headed with, with questions. So Mr. Taylor, if, um, so you folks are trying to clear your parking out um, between midnight and 6 a.m. Um, but during the day, you don't really know who's parked there. It could be somebody from Spring Valley. It could be a caregiver from some other part of the city. It could be anybody, correct? That's correct. Okay. Yep. But at midnight, you, you would go ahead and tow a, a car that's still parked there because you're trying to make sure that people are not squatting on the spaces permanently and just uh, taking them out of commission altogether. We, we wouldn't tow it, we would tag it and just basically say you're in violation of the bills that you Creek code and it would have my phone number on there to say, contact me and then if they call me, you know, I'd educate them. Hey, these are the bills that you Creek parking spaces. You can park there any day, but at midnight, from midnight to 6 a.m., it's gotta be moved. We don't, we, I, and the, I think we've towed one car in, in the almost three years I've been involved there and it was actually abandoned. So we 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 don't I'm not in the practice of we don't we don't like I don't like towing calls cars I don't like getting the calls that we towed cars so it's always as a last resort we've never actually that I've been involved have towed a a resident car there the only again the only one that's towed was actually an abandoned vehicle okay um, one of the concerns seems to be and I think I saw this in the uh, the letter that was in our packet was that. Um, if your HOA controls these spaces instead of the city controlling them, that um, parking will be pushed into Spring Valley's area. Um, how do you respond to that? My response would be that if it's one of, it shouldn't be any of our, our, our homeowners or residents because we have either um, a two car garage and two, um, uh, places to park a car in the driveway, or as a worst case scenario, we've got um, a one car garage with an option to park in an assigned parking spot there. Um, so I, I would be very surprised if, if I mean, I've heard of that one, this is uh, the one case that I've heard of was what um, the, the, the resident over on Clarion brought up, but I, I don't, I mean, I'm over there two, three times a month and I've never seen an abundance of vehicles on that little area from on Whitehall Drive from, from our private type area to Clarendon. Okay, so from, from your experience, you're telling me that, that, that you do not witness um, overflow parking from, from your HOA ending up in the neighboring HOA area. I, I, I do not, but Nancy might be able to speak better of that because she actually lives on the premises. I'm usually there either, you know, in the morning or in the, the afternoon. So Nancy, do you see a, see a overflow of our residents going onto that area? There are occasions, um, but I would say it's minimal. Um, we had one resident that had a motorcycle that he didn't want to put in his garage, so he parked over there um, probably maybe 48 hours or more at a time. But um, I would say that any resident over there at Clarendon area has the option to call the code enforcement, police, etc. cetera. Right, okay, thank you, Ms. Clayton. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. More comments, questions from the commission? Commissioner Height. Uh, Mr. Taylor, Ms. Clarendon, or Ms. Clarendon, geez, sorry, Clarendon is the name of the street. 
Clarion is your name. In any event, <clears throat> um, I'm assuming that there are times when these 12 spaces might be used for guests for up to seven days, I think is what you indicated your policy were, the <clears throat> policy is. Um, does that ever get maxed out? Do you ever have 12 visitors at one time um, there for over a week? No, we have, we have never in my 16 years of living here. And how often do you have the seven day permits? I'm sorry, I didn't understand you. So how often in a year would you grant a seven day permit? I probably have granted maybe six a year. So our most of our residents only have two cars and our requirement is that they have to have two cars in the garage and one in their driveway. So that allows three cars. So many times an overnight guest can park in the resident's driveway. And it, we uh, do not take into consideration that people want to use part of their garage for storage. Um, I have a question for Zach. Um, Zach, if, if uh, the Villa's HOA did not control these parking spaces and parking was allowed by anyone, anytime, just like on any other public street. Um, what have you and, and other city staff uh, determined would be the effect on uh, Spring, what's it called? Um, the other HOA, Spring Valley. Interesting. So you're asking what the impact is specifically, just so I'm clear. Right. What, what would be the impact on Spring Valley if the, U, um, the villas at, at uh, I, I'm getting my HOA names mixed up, um, mm -hmm. if they were not given this, uh, this vacation and therefore did not control these spaces and these spaces remained public parking? Sure, so like you mentioned right now, they are public parking. Anyone can park there and that includes non-residents of Villas at U Creek at present. Um, if the vacation goes forward, then that parking becomes private parking, right? It becomes HOA property. So that does give the HOA the ability to regulate and you know place tags on people's cars and Again, how they choose to do that, I'll leave up to them to, to further clarify. Um, so that presents a potential adverse impact for any member of the public who is seeking to park in those spaces. Um, what I would say is that in the review criteria, 15.02.055, the, the way this words is the public benefits and utility of the vacation request outweigh any adverse impacts of the vacation. It isn't necessarily that the vacation creates any adverse impacts itself. So that's kind of the line that you're trying to determine here. Okay, great. Thank you for that clarification. Um, Commissioner Poland. Zach, another question for you. Given the current state, what are the city laws, rules regarding how long somebody can be parked in one of those spots? Sure, right now, any public parking space in public right of way, the maximum duration is 72 hours before they would be required to move. Thank you. Commissioner Goldberg. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I think jumping off of Commissioner Poland's uh, question, Zach, what is the course of action that Joe Taylor and the villa that you Creek could take if they were concerned with a vehicle being uh, residing in one of those spots for longer than 72 hours? In lieu of going through the right-of-way vacation? 
just in Correct. general if things remain if things remain as they are now mm -hmm, without a vacation sure so right now they would be able to contact code enforcement if there's a vehicle in place or contact law enforcement and is it safe to say that code enforcement is responsive to inquiries or complaints if you will by hoas and other organizations that have concerns about a vehicle things going i'm sorry the beginning of your question cut out a little bit is it safe to say that code enforcement is responsive to complaints or concerns raised regarding vehicles that have stayed parked for too long in one spot? Yeah, I would say so. Okay, and then my last question also for you, I just speak to, I'm sorry if it was clear in the packet, but is it safe to say that the Spring Valley HOA has been notified about this request for vacationing of the, of the spaces and have we heard from them at all? I, might have expected to hear from them on public invited you heard or, or um, you know, some communication throughout the packet. Certainly, yeah. The, as part of our notification process, we do notify local neighborhood groups, including HOAs. When I sent the notification out initially, I didn't get a response from that HOA. I did get calls from neighbors, that's the presentation, but nothing from the HOA group specifically. Thank you. No problem. Zach, uh, another question regarding this. So currently, who does who does the road plowing of this particular area? So I assume the city probably does the street, but then does the city do those parking spaces as well? Or do you just basically plow the street and basically push the snow into those parking spaces? I would venture, since that's a local street and a non-priority plowing street in, in a large snow event, um, I'm, my assumption is that they don't plow the spaces themselves, that the HOA manages that. And Joe, I'm sure, can speak to what happens. Yeah, Zach's correct. They, um, If and when, they, they'll play that, plow the street. But we, again, for the last 20 years, have been plowing the, those parking spaces. Okay. And then, Zach, uh, Joe Taylor indicated that they've been doing the maintenance uh, of the of the right of way part that is in parking spaces. The whether whether it's rock or whether it's, uh, I guess it might be grass. Mm -hmm. um, that means then that technically the city actually should be taking care of that. Correct. That depends on. Um you know, what specifically the, the development agreement originally presented and what the responsibility of the HOA in that development agreement entails. Uh, pretty commonly for residential developments, the, you know, any right of way that's as part of your development is maintained by the owner. And in this case, that's the HOA. That's common for most, you know, residences in the city. Um, so if, if in the event that say there was damage to the curb there in the city right of way, they could contact the city and the city could be responsible for repairing it. Um, that's not uncommon. And that right would be waived in the event the vacation goes forward in this area. Does that make sense? That makes sense, thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Height. Thank you, Zach, I have more questions too. Um, in your presentation, there was a recommendation, I think, for a condition that there be a curb cut to delineate between street and parking area. Is that correct? That, I'll let Doug speak about that one. That's a condition of approval from staff. If Doug is still. Yep, I'm still here. Um, so, yep. Mr. Height, yes, that is correct. We are requiring after council approves the vacation ordinance and before that we record it, that they actually saw cut a joint between the parking and the curb. So the city will still own and maintain the curb and all the street and the parking needs to be owned by them. So to, so to reduce any conflicts in the future of ownership, we would have them install a curb or a saw cut along that line. Okay, Mr. Taylor, you're in agreement with that condition? We are. Great. Um, it, possibly Doug, the next question too. Um, there was a discussion about 
rededication or, grab, or, or obtaining the city obtaining new easements? Are there utilities or other portions inside the parking area that the city needs access to? So yeah, we so with the, with this when we vacate it, we want to maintain the city's right to use that entire space, whether it be for maintaining the roadway. Um, so if we need a staging area to put stuff in, or if we need a um, you know if we need to just get in there for forming things up like the curb and gutter, we want to be able to maintain that right to get on that property. There are several utilities located in the right of way, but not within the the area that's being vacated. Um, so we will be maintaining our right to be able to go in there and, and maintain it as we see fit. And Mr. Taylor, is the HOA all right with that part of it, that easement agreement requirement or access easement agreement? Yes, we're fine with that. So Zach, it seems like possibly we need two conditions to approve this as presented, that there be a curb cut and that the HOA enter into an appropriate easement agreement or access. No, those were, those were required as part of the staff review. Those were required prior to us making this presentation. So those are included in the approval if you approve it without conditions. Okay. Don, Planning Manager Don Burchett. Uh, Chairman Chernak, Commission, I think to uh, be consistent with the way that we typically do the vacations, I think Commissioner Height is right. We should add the two conditions um, and look at PZRB with those two conditions recommended to the City Council. Typically when we do the vacations to council and we need to make sure that we receive those easements or a condition is met um, in order for that vacation to take effect, we document those in the ordinance. And so I would recommend that we, that the commission include that in their recommendation if that's the route that you choose. Thank you. Thank you, Don. More thoughts? Questions? Commissioner Oneron. Um, you're still muted. Sorry. <laughs> uh, sounds like this parking area has been used as a visitor parking. And even though it's legally a public space, so if there's no vacation, the parking is gonna be public parking. If it is vacated, it's gonna be visitor parking. And I don't see much difference between public and visitor. They are the same people. And what I'm hearing from HOA is that it's not for their advantage to not use this as a visitor parking, except for some you know, rare occasions where a resident ask for overnight or two days parking for a you know, family visiting that particular household. Uh, and sounds like city already provides 72 hour uh, room. So as conclusion, I don't see much of a uh, impact of this particular request of vacation. That's my opinion, thanks. Commissioner Pullen. Yeah, um, I, I do agree with Commissioner Onoron. Um, in looking at the public benefits and utility versus any adverse impacts of the vacation, uh, I agree that I don't see that there's too much of an uh, adverse uh, impact. Um, it doesn't sound like there's been no proof that there's an inordinate, inordinate amount of people who use that parking um, who, who would need it for overnight. Uh, it sounds like for the most part, most of the uh, uh, pieces have three parking spaces. That seems to be more than enough to handle it. Um, and it just seems like it would be really a stretch that if you take away that parking from midnight to 6 a.m., that all of a sudden you're gonna have a flood of people going out to Clarendon. 
Um, I just really don't see that happening. And by uh, allowing this vacation, it does kind of clean up this part of the city streets, uh, the ownership and the maintenance of it. It just makes it a lot cleaner. Um, so at this point, unless something else comes up, uh, I would be for the vacation of this. Commissioner Flagg. I think I agree with Commissioner Poland in that it does clean up the situation. It also makes clear where the parking really should be uh, designated. Public streets are allowed to be parked on by anyone at any time for any reason up to 72 hours. And if you have the area that is can be used very well as guest parking for the HOA of the condos, um, used as public parking that anybody can just zoom in there and there they are and it's up to the residents to make sure nobody's parking there when they shouldn't. Um, if they were to go a little further, they'd be in a public street and be no problem. So I will be supporting the vacation of that area. Thank you. Any other further thoughts, Commissioner Goldberg? Yeah, thanks, Chairman. I think for reasons echoed by Commissioner Onron, Poland and Playing, I'll be supportive uh, of the vacation as well. Okay. Do we have a motion? Anybody want to make a motion? Commissioner Height. I think it's PCR 7B. I don't have my numbers in front of me, um, but it's approval with conditions and I don't have that, hold on. And the conditions being? Uh, one and two, uh, PCR 2027B with the conditions being that a curb cut be installed if and when approved by city council. And in addition, the HOA entered into an appropriate access and or easement agreement um, if it were approved by city council. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Height. We have uh, a motion to approve 2020-7Z, 7B, um, which has uh, two conditions, one about a curb cut, the other about an easement. Commissioner Poland? I will second that motion. Seconded by Commissioner Poland. Any further discussion? Let's take a vote. Those in favor say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Seeing none, that passes unanimously. Um, and this item will now be forwarded to the Longmont City Council for action. If you're unfamiliar with council procedures and intend to appear before council, please contact the planning division for further information <clears throat> at 303. 651-8330. Mr. Taylor, Ms. Clayton, thank you for uh, taking your time to present to us. Um, Zach and uh, Doug, thank you for being here tonight as well. Um, we have some more business to take care of on our agenda, so we'll move on to that. Um, item seven is our final call, public invited to be heard. Um, we'll put our slide up again uh, for how people can call in if they want to make a comment about something that was not on tonight's agenda. And if you want to do that, call 1-888-788-0099, enter meeting ID 838-3828-8942. It's 1-888-788-0099, enter 838-3828. 8942. Takes us about five minutes to get everybody entered into the meeting. So we'll take a five minute break. Thanks.
Chair Chernick, we do not have anyone in our um, waiting room. Okay, thank you, Heather. Um, so we'll move on to any items from the commission. Any commissioners have anything? No, seeing nothing. Uh, let's see, we don't have Council Representative uh, Rodriguez with us tonight. Uh, any items from Don Burchett, our planning manager? Chairman Chernick, um, just wanted to pass on compliments to everybody again for working with us with this technology. Wanted to say thank you to Heather and Susan and to Jane for all their hard work on making this seamless for us. We really do appreciate all that. And then also just wanted to thank again, Doug and Zach for their work on the vacation request to make it, make it I think, fairly easy to understand something that could have been pretty complicated. So I just wanted to say thank you to them. And that's all that I have. So thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Don. Um, and uh, unless anybody is opposed, uh, we will adjourn. All right, we're adjourned. Oh, wait, right, Commissioner, Commissioner Height. I just want to say, Zach, great job. Yes, good job, Zach. And welcome to the team. All right. Okay, we're adjourned. Take care. <laughs>